In the 1920s, astronomers plotted the colour or temperature of stars against their luminosity in what is known as an HR diagram. Our sun has a solar luminosity of 1 and a temperature of 6,000 degrees Kelvin. Stars cooler than the sun are dimmer, while hotter stars are brighter. These are referred to as main sequence stars. But standing out from this logical order were some dim but hot stars. They can only be dim because they are small. In these so-called white dwarves, normal fusion has ceased. Also puzzling are bright red stars. How could this be? If they are bright, they must have a large surface area to give off that much light. So they have to be big. But big stars should be blue, not red. So these red giants can't have the normal hydrogen fusion reaction either. We begin to solve these puzzles by plotting the stars of several different clusters. Clusters are born in nebulae. They are giant gas clouds of hydrogen and dust and are only just beginning to form stars. If we plot these stars on an HR diagram, we see that they are relatively cool. Only some of the stars have begun their fusion reactions. The gas in a nebula continues to collect and form stars to become an open cluster. We know that open clusters are relatively young because there are still hydrogen clouds between the stars. All of the stars in this cluster are on the main sequence. A globular cluster is old. There is no hydrogen between the stars. We see no blue or white stars, but there are red and yellow stars, as well as red giants and white dwarfs. This suggests that the blue and white stars have used up their fuel and disappeared long ago. Further observations reveal that stars move through various life stages. Yellow stars become red giants and then white dwarfs. Small red stars have relatively low pressure in their cores. They should take about 1,000 billion years to use their fuel. Then they should cool and shrink, becoming black dwarfs. There are probably no black dwarfs in the universe, as the universe is just not old enough. The sun is 5 billion years old. Yellow stars stay unchanged on the main sequence for about 10 billion years. Then they swell about 100 times. Due to this expansion, the surface cools to become red hot. At this stage, they're known as red giants. They still give off a lot of light because they're so large. Then, as this star shows, the red giant blows away its outer mantle of red hot gas, leaving a white dwarf in the center. White dwarfs are white hot but their surface is smaller than the Earth. They can't give out much light, so they appear dim. Let's look in detail at the life of a blue star. After only a million years or so, the hydrogen in the core is used up. The reaction stops and the star collapses, heating up both the core and the gas envelope. Under compression, hydrogen gas in the envelope starts fusing. It heats and expands to form a super giant. The really big ones become white giants. The somewhat smaller ones end up red. In the core, compression produces enough heat for helium to fuse to carbon and oxygen. Taking a million years to complete, this is the first of a sequence of increasingly rapid fusion reactions that produce a series of elements. Each time a fusion reaction in the core runs out of fuel, the star collapses under the force of gravity. With each collapse, the core gets hotter, until the next reaction is triggered and the star undergoes massive expansion.
When the temperature reaches a blistering 3 billion degrees, it takes only a few days for iron to form from silicon and sulfur. Iron itself cannot fuse spontaneously to become anything else. As the star goes from one reaction to another, it heats up and cools down. So its position on the HR diagram moves back and forth across the top. Eventually, no more heat comes from the core. The star collapses, falling at incredible speeds, up to a third the speed of light. The core temperature soars, reaching an unimaginable 100 billion degrees. The remaining hydrogen and other fuels fuse together in one last massive meltdown. A supernova, a colossal explosion and the biggest light show we will ever see. It's over in an instant, but it's bright enough to outshine an entire galaxy. Coming out of this chaos are the newly made heavy atoms, such as iodine, lead, gold and uranium. Only a supernova explosion can generate enough energy to make those elements that are heavier than iron. In time, matter ejected from supernova explosions will mix with gas clouds and condense back into the stuff of which everything in our galaxy is made. The stars, planets and even people. As the Earth contains many elements heavier than iron, we must all be children of a supernova. For all their spectacle, most supernovae leave a faint and very modest memorial, a neutron star only a few kilometers across. And the bigger they are, the further they fall. Some of the supernovae compress even further to become the ultimate cosmic has-been, a black hole. The gravity from a black hole is so great that not even light can escape, so it appears black. We can only detect them because of the massive X-rays given off by matter as it falls in. No one knows what is beyond a black hole, which makes it such a hot topic for science fiction writers. What's on the other side? Another Big Bang? Another universe with different laws of physics? Ever since the beginning of time, we have looked to the stars and wondered about their origins, little knowing that we have much in common. Through analysing starlight, we can work out what goes on inside them and what their future may be. And we now know we're all made of the same stuff. Stardust.